Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chell and this is Chella Reads a Bit. Today I'm going to be bringing you my March wrap up. In the month of March, I was able to read 11 books. I did participate in the Aurelium Gear Up Readathon, the mini magical readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. She created the readathon and I was able to participate in that and I did complete my two prompts. That happened between March 14th and 20th. I do have a vlog for it and I will leave it in the description below if you haven't seen it. So I do have 11 books to talk about. It might be a long one so I do want to just dive right in but before I do that if you do enjoy these videos please feel free to give a like and subscribe. I would love to have you here. So let's get right into the books that I read in the month of March. So first book that I read I needed to get done in order to read the next book in that series for the readathon in that book was Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the Nevermore series. It is a middle grade about Morrigan who is a cursed child which means that on her 12th birthday she is going to die and anything that happens within this town is blamed on cursed children and Morgan is one of those. And on her birthday, she is destined to die, but Jupiter North comes and saves her and takes her to the world of Nevermore. And she is then thrust into the trials to become part of the Wondrous Society. So that's essentially the synopsis for the first one. This is the second one. I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens in this one because that would be spoilery. But I did have to read this in order to do one of my prompts for the mini magical readathon. I did really enjoy this book. I love how whimsical and magical these books are. I do sometimes get annoyed with Morgan, but and like people things that are going on but they're children so I totally understand like what why and and everything but I enjoyed my time. I if I flew through this book, finished it really fast. I gave it four stars. I'm glad I started the month out with this. It was very fun and I'm glad that I got it done in order to read the book I needed for my readathon that was happening but I really enjoyed it there's not much I can say about it since it is the second in a, in a series I'm excited for the the fourth one that's going to be coming out this year hopefully it doesn't get pushed back but I really enjoyed this and I really recommend it's a fun middle grade very magical if you're into that kind of like whimsy magical school kind of setting I would totally look at this I gave it four stars loved it it's, it's a fun time very very fast very fun read so that was the first one that I finished in March next I read a book that I chose to read for part of my character creation that's part of the readathon kind of thing where you have prompts in order to create your character and I needed to fulfill my one to become an earthling I believe so that means that I had to read something with elemental magic or anything like that within the book so I chose a reread for that and that's what I read second in March and that was Old Magic by Marianne Curley. This is a old favorite. The first time I read it five out of five stars I've reread it so many times even when I wasn't much of a rereader. I do reread books more now but back in the day I really wasn't someone who reread books and I would always reread this one. I love this book and even upon reread this time I still love it. I do see the flaws in it. It's not like the best written. It's in the most lyrical or the best literature and it's very tropey. It's very predictable and everything but I I love this book. Like it is still five out of five stars. No change there. I still enjoy my time. I finished it so quick. I always listen to a specific artist when I read this book so anytime i read this i always listen to megan mccauley but i always listen to that album whenever I, I read this because it just the vibes are very similar some songs might not work but a good majority of them do in the last half mostly just a few of the songs work really well with it wonder is like the number one song that i think works so well with this book that and reverie and then there's another one i can't think off the top of my head but they work so well with this book and so I always listen to that. I still enjoyed doing that this time around. The book is, it's in two perspectives. It's in the perspective of Kate and Jared. So Kate is this girl who lives with her grandmother because her mom left when she was a baby because her mom just couldn't handle being a mom. And so her grandmother is kind of like a witch 
and so is Kate. She can do certain things as well. And in this community of, I think it's Ash Peak, I don't quote me on that, the people in her school, like, make fun of her, they bully her because they think she's different and all that other stuff. And then the, in comes Jared, who's a new student, and Kate is immediately drawn to him because something is different about him. He's very clumsy. He There's something deeper to him than um, even what he expects, and she's trying to get him to acknowledge that maybe he has this gift, but he lives his life in following these rules that not, anything that doesn't fall into those rules they don't it, it's not possible magic can it possibly exist and there's possible family curse in the book it, it's so good i will not spoil it for you but i totally recommend this book because it's just it's fun it's fun to read it's nothing like too groundbreaking i get that but i love this book and it's pretty much just them like kate trying to get him to come to terms with and like understand that there's more to life and more to the world than what he thinks and like trying to maybe fix like save people and fix a curse and blah blah, blah. don't want to give too much away but i mean it's some stuff on the back but i love this book five out of five stars every time i loved it second book i did complete it so i am an earthling i haven't chosen my element yet but please if you hear anything from me it's read this I love it. I love it. I don't think anyone talks about it and I don't, it's very underhyped, which I can get. It's not like the best, but I totally think it deserves a read. But this was my second book that I finished in the month and five out of five stars. <sighs> and then it goes downhill a bit. So the next read that I have is one that I read because like I always say, I'm like a broken record at this point. I am reading the, my backlist fairy loot in the order that I got them. So the next one was Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. So let me just start off by saying I love the cover. I think it's beautiful. Yes, there's two people on the cover, but I don't care. It's still a beautiful cover. I love the colors. I love the sprayed edges. They are so beautiful, but that's where it ends for me. I did not like this book. I really did not enjoy my time. I literally skimmed a majority of this book. And you can tell me that that doesn't count as reading it. Okay, cool for you. I think it counts because I spent my time. Because I did want to find, I know I could have DNF'd it, but I did want to find out what happened at the end. Yes, I know I said that I was going to do more DNFs because, you know, DNF is self-care quoting Jess Owens here from Jess Owens. I have a hard time doing that for some reason because I'm like, I want to still know what happens at the end, but I really should have. But I did enjoy one perspective in the book. It is in in three perspectives. Two of them are bone criers and the one is the boy, this boy on the cover. But I really did not enjoy my time reading this. Even with that one perspective that I enjoyed, even close to the end, I was starting to not even care about their perspective. I didn't like what happened at the end. I didn't enjoy this main character and I didn't enjoy the the male lead. I didn't like the the elements that were in it. I don't like maybe this is a spoiler, I don't know. I don't like revenge plots. <laughs> Sasuke pisses me off. I and that's a revenge plot. I hate you I, too. I've ranted and ranted and raved so many times to my family and like my boyfriend, my sister and them about how much I think Sasuke is stupid within Naruto. So if I'm going to bash Sasuke in a show that I love, then I have to keep that same energy because I did not like this. Like sometimes revenge plots can be good, but I, for some reason, I think that it has to be really well done and it hasn't been well done this revenge plot that's in it I thought was really stupid the reasoning the justification <clears throat> just really didn't work for me it was really stupid I just I really hated it and the female character who has the love interest I didn't 
really care for her and I didn't care for her love interest. I didn't care for them getting together. It was just, it was a whole pile of garbage. If you really want to know what the book is about, I don't even really remember exactly what it's about because I really just wanted to block it out of my brain. The book is about the bone criers are there to shepherd the dead of either one of two gates so that they don't wreak havoc on the living. And so in there's certain things that has to happen in order for someone to become a bone crier. So it's about these two girls going through the steps of that. But one of them is about to do the, the right in order to become a bone crier and be able to... I forget what it's called, but it's one of the people who actually gets the the dead in to go to the gate so the male perspective is he is trying to seek revenge because a bone crier killed his dad and he saw it so he blames all bone criers so he wants to get revenge and they all come together in this book and it was a whole pile of nothing stupid i didn't like it i'm sorry if you enjoyed it, that's good for you. I'm happy. I want people to enjoy books, even if I don't. But this just did not work for me. Don't like the revenge plot. Don't like the love interest. I don't love, like, the enemies to lovers wasn't done very well. The villain was lackluster. It just wasn't for me. I gave this a whopping two stars. Very disappointed. Very didn't like it. Beautiful cover not a good inside if you want to read it go ahead i'm not gonna discourage you from reading it i just personally didn't like it and hated my time reading it but that is another fairy loot down and two stars unfortunately but that was the third book that i read in the month so after that just sadness of reading a two star book i was happy to pick up the first book in the keeper of the lost cities this is a reread i'm rereading all of the books like one each month till the next the next one comes out which hopefully it's still going to be november hopefully it doesn't get pushed back but i'm rereading all of them each month in preparation for that release the ninth book is stellar loon and i am so excited for that book to come out but I am rereading them and so I reread the first one still loved it still enjoyed it I did not want to put it down I literally sat in bed and I was like you know I'm gonna read only a bit and then I'm going to put it down so that I don't finish it too fast but then I kept finding myself still going and still going and then I'm like I'm about to finish this book and I didn't want to finish it yet so I still love it. I still see that it's not the best written. It's not the best literature. Sophie needs to stop letting out the breath she didn't know she'd been holding because that happens too many fucking times in these books. But I can still look past it. I love these books. It is by Shannon Messenger. I'm not bashing San Shannon Messenger here. But that needs to not be in the books. But it is a middle grade, so whatever... Who cares exactly what I have to say? I'm not really in that age age range, clearly. But I still enjoy it. I still love my time reading it. It is still a comforting book as I read it. Even though there is certain topics in it that are hard. But if you don't know what it's about, Keeper of the Lost Cities is about Sophie, who is a telepath. She goes to high school and she's actually a senior and she's only 12. Um, she's get a gifted student she's struggling with this telepathy she gets headaches and then on a field trip she comes across a boy named Fitz who then takes her to this place and then her whole world is turned upside down she finds out things about herself she didn't know that she's not who she thought she was and things go from there and she has to make decisions things happen it is it is I still love it I still love it still give it four stars very high four stars it's very hard for me to give five stars so even when i'm praising a book it's not always going to be a five star so just be aware of that like that doesn't mean i like it less it's just i'm it's very hard for me to give a five star but i still love it it's very high four i recommend i know some people don't like it and that's fine but i i, I love it it's very it's very comforting to read 
for some reason I just I just really enjoy it. Middle grade has been really fun to read these days. I've always enjoyed it, but I've been, it really is comforting these days. So I am glad I was able to read this after such a disappointing read at like Bunk Iron Moon. But this really helped pick me up and I was like feeling better after that. And I did finish it pretty quick, but I'm excited to continue and I'm excited for the ninth book to come out. So that was the next book that I read in the month of March and I gave it four stars again. The next book I read is in a series of books that I also want to kind of try to read every month. Within the month of April and stuff I might not be reading it because I have other books that I need to get to because in April the as of filming this it is April 3rd. It is the magical readathon, the spring equinox. So I have other books I need to get done so I might not have I might not continue it within April but in March I did complete Clockwork Angel in order to do my Cassandra Clare read minus certain books mostly just like the Mortal Instruments kind of series the Dark Artifices Infernal Devices and all those but this uh this is the first in the Infernal Devices so I did finish this in the month of March it is about Tessa who is who is going to London to meet up with her brother because their aunt has passed away so she has nothing to keep her in New York um, and then she is kidnapped by the Dark Sisters and she finds out stuff about herself she didn't know she then is thrust into the world of shadow hunters and it's all about them trying to get like to the bottom of these clockwork creatures that are are coming about um, so it's a lot of that jazz there's I don't know how much more to say about it it is the first in the Infernal Devices, and I actually didn't really enjoy it. I know I always hear people don't really care for the Immortal Instruments, but they really enjoy the Infernal Devices, and I really didn't enjoy this first book. I didn't. I do not like Tessa as a character. I think she is insufferable. I think she's so annoying when it comes to her brother. Like I understand, like the family taking care of family being there for family and and everything but she just is so annoying when it comes to her brother Nate it, it just is like girl you even see the problem but yet you are coming at other people if they say anything bad about Nate whatever a bit whatever and at the same time I love Jem Jem is a gem <laughs> you know what I did <laughs> I love Jem, but I do not really care for Will. Like, he kind of is like Jace with dark hair. And I didn't like it. I don't really care for Will, and I don't care for Tessa. The other characters are fine. I do not like Jessamine, or however you say her fucking name. I don't care. I did not like her. She's annoying. I did not enjoy this book. I literally couldn't have cared less. It was so predictable. It was just so annoying to read. Like, I'm sorry. I know everybody, lo like, a lot of people love this compared to the Mortal Instruments, but I I did not enjoy it. And I did not enjoy Tessa and Will. Poor Jem. It's the short end of the stick in this book. But I don't really have much to say about it. I kind of just let it go out of my brain a bit. So I gave it three stars. It was it was what it was it's a shadow hunter book it's fine three stars i don't really have anything to say about it i just didn't like this and i didn't like will and i didn't really care what was happening and that's pretty much it and that was the next one that i read so after that um me and my boyfriend have been were playing stardew valley a lot and i was looking at books to read maybe on my kindle or something and then i came across on my libby app the audiobook for how to train your dragon which was narrated by a david tennant so i was like let me read that so i was listening to it by myself for like a few minutes and like i was laughing and then i was like do you like to my boyfriend i was like do you want to listen to this while we play and he's like yeah so me and him listened to the whole audiobook of how to train your dragon by Cressida cowell together and it was a good time it was funny it was cute we had a good time read like listening to it 
David Tennant did an amazing job at the voices and just the it, it was so fun to listen to I do enjoy that book I really want to get them physically but me and him listened to that it was really fast it was like only four hours and I enjoy it. it is a middle grade about Hiccup who is the son of the chief of the clan tribe I forget exactly the wording of these people and he, they in order to be able to be in this group they have to f pass these tests and hiccup is not very good at certain things <laughs> so he's looked down upon he's said to be useless and it's about them having to get these dragons and train them in order to be a part of the tribe or clan I can't remember the word. It's all about that. I don't want to say too much. I feel like you should just read it. It's really cute. Um, but we had such a good time. Laughed out loud a lot. It, it was fun to listen to the audiobook. I would still love to have the physical copies and listen to the audiobook at the same time. But we enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. It was so fun, especially after reading Finishing Clockwork Angel. It was nice to have something nice, light, and funny to just cleanse my palate. It was amazing. Middle grade really helped me out this month to have like a better month of reading. So I totally recommend reading How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell. I gave it four stars. So after that started the mini magical Re Aurelium Gear Up Readathon from the 14th to the 20th. And I had two books set out for that, which for, was for my le legacy, for my guild. And that was Animal Familiar. So I had to read a book with the animal that I wanted to become my familiar either on the cover mentioned in the book or something like that so I read Wicked Fox for my animal familiar and I did complete it I did enjoy the first half I was able to finish the first half the first day I enjoyed that first half the last half I did not enjoy I ended up not liking it I was very disappointed because I really was hoping to like it because I enjoyed the whole idea of the nine-tailed fox this is Korean based so within this book um mi young is a kumiho which is a nine-tailed fox and in order to survive they have to feed on the energy of men and in the book she meets jihoon and she ends up having to save him and in saving him she loses her fox feed she then is having to figure out how to get the fox feed back to where it needs to be and navigating relationships she does justify the men that she takes energy from because they are men that do evil things so she justifies it that way but she still finds herself as some as someone who is not a good person so it's her navigating people wanting to get close to her it was blurbed as like a k-drama and it's by cat show i keep forgetting to say the author's names i apologize but this is by cat show it's blurbed as like a k-drama and i i love k-dramas i think they're fun and I enjoy the Korean setting, the, the use of Korean, the descriptions of food. I In the soul setting, I loved that. I just didn't care for the characters. I really did not have a good time with the last half. I wasn't enjoying getting Mi Young and Ji Hoon getting closer. It just became too insta-love, too predictable, too much sometimes it just was all over the place i am very repetitive and certain things happen i'm like for what like it, i just did not enjoy the last half i enjoyed the beginning but i literally was skimming a lot of the last half because i just was not enjoying my time like i say in my vlog if it's something that sounds appealing to you please feel free to read it don't listen to what i have to say what i have to say doesn't really mean much so that's just my opinion these are just my opinions make your own read it decide for yourself but i did not end up enjoying this book in the end i did i at least was able to complete it for my my legacy for the readathon i did give it a three it was fine i didn't enjoy the last half but the first half i did enjoy so i gave it a three it was disappointing to say the least but i'm glad that i finished it and i'm glad i was able to get it off my tbr because it has been there for a while and i do not know if i'm ever going to read the second book 
but that was the next one that I read. And then after that, within that same week, I had the last prompt that I needed to fulfill was for my conduit, which means the object that you focus your magic into to use. And I chose bow, and that meant that I had to read a book with the word hunt in the title or in the name of the author. So I read Hollow Pox the Hunt for Morgan Crow, which is the third in the Nevermore series, which is why I read Wondersmith in the beginning of the month because I needed to finish that before I could get to this one. Since it's the third book, again, I can't say anything and I've already described what Nevermore is about. All I have to say about this book is I loved this book. I laughed out loud so many times reading this. Morgan did kind of get on my nerves sometimes with how she was getting obsessed with certain things and focusing on the wrong things at certain times and losing sight of the grand picture of certain like like her friends and everything i was getting quite frustrated but she does come around at some point and realizes what she's doing so that's good but i did enjoy it i laughed so many times in this book it is pretty close to home it does have a virus plot line within it and there's some things that I was like, the injustice that is going on in this book makes me upset, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was really fun. It makes me even more excited for the next book coming out and can't wait for it. I do not like the US covers, so I hope one day to get the UK editions. Oh, I, I love this book. It was so fun. I gave it a four stars, a very high four. I, It's so whimsical, so magical, and I really enjoy that, and it's just a lot a, a lot of laughs a lot of just wanting to know what's gonna happen i love jupiter north i love all her friends morgan again did get on my nerves a bit but all in all i do enjoy morgan i love cadence i think she's so interesting i think that she is just so such a good character i loved miss cheery she was like it is such a good book. i am excited for the next one. I cannot wait for it to come out. And I totally recommend this series. If you are into middle grade or if you like anything magical, please pick it up. But this was the one that I read for bow and I did complete it. So my conduit is a bow and I have an animal familiar. So I was able to finish my two prompts for that mini magical readathon, Aurelium Gear Up, which I had a good time doing. And so that was the next one that I read. After that, I finished Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. That, I believe, is like a middle grade book or YA. I can, can never tell with that, but I finished that. It was it was very quick. It was cute. It was just like a random book that I decided to read because I was just like not sure what I wanted to read at that point. It was on my library app, so I was like, you know, why not? Eh. I keep trying to push my glasses. I don't have more. The book is about this girl named Miri. I don't know how to say her name. Her and her sister and dad live in this village on top of this mountain and they work in this quarry miri is not allowed to work in the quarry but you don't find out why until later on but they in this quarry they mine this stone i don't remember the name of but it's very valuable but what, what the story is about is this mountain village is chosen the priests determine the prince will find his fiance there it's very weak. I don't know even how to word what this book is about. Essentially that the prince is going to find his princess there and they have to open up this princess academy for all these eligible girls from the mountain village. And Miri is one of them. His Her sister just w met the cutoff that she wasn't able to go. So Miri has to go to this academy and it's about getting them ready for this prince to come learning the ins and outs of like reading economics all this other stuff dancing because there's going to be this ball and at the ball the prince will meet all of the girls and then decide who he will be marrying so it's just pretty much about that and her miri has like a lot going on personally she just feels like she's worthless because of she's not able to work in the quarry and it's her finding out more about herself and about the people around her and this ma like a little bit of magical thing that they're able to do within her village it's very it's very cute it's very 
It was a very quick read. It's very hard, very hard to describe, clearly. But my nose is itchy. But I enjoyed it. It, it wasn't too hard. It wasn't like the best written, but it was quick. It was easy. It was fun. It was cute. Eight of a three. It was fine. It was middle of the road. It's not nothing to write home about. Not much to say. Three stars. So then after that, I finished The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia, but it is like the sixth in publication order, but it chronicles the events of how Narnia came to be, so it's better to read it first. I enjoyed it. It was very quick, very speedy, took no time. It was interesting. It was interesting seeing how Narnia came to be, like the events that had to transpire in order for it to happen. Um, it's about a boy named Diggory and a girl named Polly. Diggory has this uncle who is a magician. He tricks them into going into this in-between place and you learn a lot from there. I don't want to give too much away because I don't know all that's in the description of the book. So I'm just going to leave it there. It's just how Narnia came to be, how it, it, how it came to exist, how it was created, and all that stuff. It was very interesting. It was very, very quick. Like, did not take that long to read. Very confusing at times. I didn't hate it. It wasn't, like, the best, but it is very heavy on, like, religion. I think that it, that theme is really driven in there. Is the term son of Adam, daughter of Eve is used in there, and I'm not very religious, but it, it doesn't it didn't bother me per se. It, it was just there. It was fun. It was fine. It was quick. I wanted to see how it all came to be. So not really much to say about that one either because it literally just took no time to read. Um, it does give a lot of information that you might not have known just going into like the ne the first one in publication order, but it was very interesting. I would recommend reading it. And I gave it three stars. Then after that, I did read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Also by C.S. Lewis, the actual, like, first one in publication order. Which, as we all know, is about the four siblings who end up having to live with this professor. Because the the bombings in London, Sarah Baum sends them to this professor. So they, and then Lucy comes across this wardrobe that takes her into Narnia and it's the adventures from there. That's all I'm going to say. It was, it was interesting seeing the way the book was compared to the movie because me and my boyfriend did watch the movie and it was very interesting, the differences. And let me just say that movie is very long. I forgot that it was almost two and a half hours. That's a bit excessive. I don't think it needed to be that long, but it was interesting seeing the differences in the two and like what they changed and what they kept. But it was, it was very interesting. I did enjoy it. There were some things that I still was confused on, even reading The Magician's Nephew, that I don't think was explained. Even though The Magician's Nephew comes later, he, he wrote it later than The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and he had things within The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that he didn't explain that would have would have helped a bit. Like, the deep magic no spoilers or anything that was in the line the witch in the wardrobe that wasn't explained how that came to be in the magician's nephew but that's neither here nor there but that's just like something i noticed i enjoyed seeing it and enjoyed watching the movie and comparing the two again the uh theme of religion is in there but it was it was uh, it was a fun read very quick it took me no time at all to read it especially like since how long that movie is it took just a day to read not even a day to read that book but i enjoyed it i gave it three stars and i had a I had a good time and that is all that i ended up reading in the month of march i did have a good reading month i did have a lot of fun doing the mini magical readers i really am gear up i enjoyed vlogging it it was a good time editing it though was whew, not fun but you know it is neither here nor there but i'm excited to see what I read in April. I hope that you guys were able to read a lot of good books in March. I hope you had had a decent month as well, and I hope that you guys have a decent April. But that's pretty much all that I read. I had a semi-decent month. I think middle grade really helped me out 
and rereading old magic that was fun hopefully april goes just as well it might not because things are going to be a little up and down at the end of april going into may and from then on but we're going to do our best and that's pretty much it if you do enjoy this video please feel free to give a like and subscribe i would love to have you here and i will see you in my next video <laughs> bye